Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today we're looking at a an Echo CS330T chainsaw. It's a tiny little guy. The T might stand, I'm not all familiar with models and everything. I, I, I fix chainsaws, but I don't know every chainsaw I've ever made. I believe the T would probably stand for a top handle. So that's a, that's a style of chainsaw, top handle chainsaw. But anyways, doesn't matter. Customer's complaint is it hemorrhages oil. The bar oil always leaks out of it. Um, it is normal for chainsaws to have some oil underneath them. Whether this one has got a broken line or a cracked tank or something, I don't know. We're going to investigate. I'm going to fire it up. I'm going to tune it, make sure everything's working good. I'm going to adjust the carb. I'm also going to pull the muffler off, and I'm going to have a look to make sure the screen isn't plugged up or anything. It seems to have a lot of compression. So... When I pull that off, I'm going to check the piston. You should be able to see the piston and the rings. And I'm going to see if it's got any scoring or any kind of other marks in there. Uh, if it does, it's probably not worth fixing it. But uh, I think what we'll do is we'll start with that first. Because if it's if it's toast, it's toast. There's no sense fixing it. So let me get the thing turned around so I can get you in the stand. And we'll start taking the side off of that. And we'll look at the condition of the cylinder and the piston. All right, let's get into it. I want to pull this cover off first because I got to get to the muffler. I see a couple of screws. There's one under here and one here. Probably more than that, but get this one out. One under here. Yep, another screw here. So let's get that off of there. Got to remove the two nuts that hold the chain brake assembly chain brake off of there you you chain off of there get the bar off of there just get them out of the way that's a safety chain. These cut very slow. Let's see if I can get you around the camera here. So there's your, there's a rake. Clears your chips. That's a cutting tooth. And this high ridge here makes sure that it doesn't cut too fast. <laughs> yep. sure how good that is going to pick up. See how dull that tooth is? Chainsaws are for cutting wood. If you want to cut concrete, then get a concrete saw. <laughs> Anyways, it hasn't been sharpened very many times. The, the teeth are very, still very long across the top here. As you sharpen them, they start to wear back. Anyways, don't care about the chain. And there's our other screw. metal piece in there that goes into that screw. Before I take this, this is holds, uh, this is your outlet, that's where the screen is, but I'm going to pop these two off here and get the uh, actual muffler off the cylinder. Not 10 millimeter, I'm not. 8 millimeter. 5 sixteenths. Same thing. No sense putting time and effort into something that possibly wiped, so we'll check it out first. Huh. Well, this muffler has a catalytic converter in it. Emissions. See that honeycomb? That's a catalytic converter inside this muffler. It's heavy. Anyway. So I'm going to shine a light down in the cylinder. I'm going to pull the cord over. 
gently. I don't have the uh, spark plug out. It's got one piston ring in there. I don't see a lot of scoring in it. But it's really hard to tell. There's not much visible in there. Usually if the piston is going to be mangled, it'll be on the exhaust side anyways. So I don't see a big problem in there. It's got lots of compression, so I don't think it's got many hours on it. All right, so that's good. We're all right that, that way. We'll put this 45 pound muffler back on there. And the bar. And the mismatch of washers. One thin washer, one thin washer, and two thin washers stuck together. I'll run them down with this. And they just snug them by hand. Tiny bolts, tiny nuts. Don't want to break things, don't want to strip things. Uh, Phillips. Let's get that screen out of there. We'll just have a look see. first one came out a little mangled. Sometimes if you over mix your oil that screen will plug up and causes grief. Won't run right. It doesn't exhaust properly so let's have a look at our screen. Nice. Nice and clear. See through it nice. That's alright. It's going to go back on. I'm not going to do a catalytic converter delete on this. <laughs> Come on now. Oh, the screen's in the way. The screen slid down. Back in your home. There you go. This one, I may have to get Rammy with it. Okay, now I'll tighten up by hand. Pull this plate off. Let's make sure you're still looking where I'm looking. I'm gonna pull this plate off here. Check it behind here. That's where the oiler. That's where the oil comes out to oil your your bar. There's I don't think a single drop of oil left in this machine. Is there more screws? Oh, I may need to take more apart. It's not plugged anyways, I can see right in there. There's a in this slot there's a little hole and it just comes out that slot. And it oils the bar, goes into the hole here. The chain picks it up and drags it through. The bar's not very worn. This is a very it's not a heavy duty saw, like this isn't a firewood saw, it's a little limbing saw, so. Well, it looks alright. So this is all good in here, we'll put that cover back on. hand.
This one had that little piece of metal on it. Backwards like this. One more at the bottom. <clears throat> what I'm going to do next is I'll pull the other side off. I'll pull the recoil off because the oil tank's on that side. I'm going to see if the feed line is cracked or or anything back there. Let's get all the parts back on. Put this little screw back in there since this plate is captured at the front here need to take it all apart so I'm not gonna the bar on put a chain on in the right direction make sure it's sitting in the clutch properly make sure it's sitting up into the groove of the bar Put our side plate back on. And what I'll do is I'm going to, uh, I'll get these down, just turned down a little bit, not too, too tight. I want to be able to move the bar to adjust the chain. So I'll just run these down until they're snug. That slot there is fine. Chain brake. Uh, Phillips or straight screwdriver. I lift the bar up on this saw. The adjustments here. You see the chain start is rising. We'll leave a little bit of slack in it. There we go. Just snug. These don't have to be uh, very tight. Just snug. I'm only using a quarter drive ratchet on it. Well, that's that. I'm going to get it turned around here. I'll put it in the vise. And uh, that way it's, it's a little higher for me. And uh, it's easier to work on. So stand by. We'll get it turned around. All right, we got it turned around. I'm going to pop these screws out of the cover here. Get the recoil off. Hmm. Looks like I have to take that off. There's another one there. Probably a screw or something that holds that the handle onto the side cover because it sure doesn't want to come out. I think there's a plug here I got to get out. I'm gonna grab some tools and do that. Hang on. Yeah, that's what it was. There's a little rubber plug in the center here and a flat screw. There. A funky looking screw. I put a couple of screws back in the recoil to hold it while I was messing around with the other stuff, so get those back out. Should come off for us nice now. Here's that screw fell out. Just checking out the, uh, the recoil here, checking for frayed cord. Looks good. Works good. Air shield. Huh, that looks like a breather. It 
It is. There's a little O-ring here. Looks like the oil tank breather. I imagine if that gets plugged up, it would, uh, as it heats up, it'll pressurize the oil tank and pump oil out. I'm not seeing anything wrong in here. It's likely a fuel tank breather. I can't open that, it's full. Fuel's full. Oil's empty. I'm not seeing anything broken, cracked, otherwise no good. Everything seems to be in order. Huh. Alright, well maybe I'll put it together and see if it'll fire up. Yeah, just let me throw that all back together and go from there. I don't see anything wrong here that's causing it to leak oil. I mean, it could be at a normal level. I haven't put oil in it. I'm, so it is, I've got two or three chainsaws of my own and over time they, they sit in oil. I've got uh, a steel MS-130 or a MS-170 and it, it's in a case and it cases usually got oil on the bottom of it. Got an old Home Light Super 2. It's got oil on the bottom of the case, and even my Husqvarna 55, it leaks too, so. Alright, I'll put it together and fire the camera back up when it's blowing smoke. Hang on. needs a carb kit. Carb kit. Fuel pump diaphragm is probably hardened up and not working. So we'll tear into that too. All right, let's see what we need to get into to do that carburetor. Air cleaner cover. Air cleaner. Not even. Not even. Not even dusty. Little one fuel line. Little air horn. Choke linkage, throttle linkage, two screws, that should come off all easy, easy peasy. Just clean the bench off. Got a rag down there, a paper towel, so we don't get, we don't introduce extra crap into the carburetor. It's probably already got enough. We'll pop that fuel line off of there real quick. Couple of screws in. Long ones. Air horn comes off with the second screw. Carb should be just about free now. 
We got a pulse line down there. Oh, the idle screw is sitting outside the case here. That yeah, shouldn't be too much of a problem. Well, the pulse line's off. Okay, it's your job to remember where these line, where these rods go. It's your job. This one is under that one. How's that one bent? I can't see it. There it is. Got it. There we are. Little Walbro carburetor. Imagine when I take this off here, that diaphragm in there is going to be crinkly. And uh, when I was adjusting the high speed screw, the uh, was this one here. It's got limiter caps on it, so that's as tight as it goes, and that's as open as it goes. So that's lean and that's rich. That was as as much as I could get out of it. It sounded like it was starving when it was revving, so it was uh, breaking up pretty bad. Fuel line. That's our fuel line. This will be a pulse line. Yeah, that's the pulse line off the front of the manifold here. This line is what's going to make your fuel pump go up and down. That's the fuel inlet. It's, it's inletting fuel right now as I speak. <laughs> okay. I'm going to let that sit there with a rag on it. I'm just going to shimmy you guys a little bit. And we'll get uh, that carb torn apart. Run out of room here. All right, let's pull this off first. Okay, where are you looking? All right, should be good there. Uno. Dos. It is also your job to remember which way that line comes off. Told you, there will be a test at the end. Okay. It's a little clumpy, a little crispy. Can't hurt to do a refresh anyways. I believe I have a carb kit in stock for this. Gently now. A little stinky. That gas isn't quite new. It's not the most horrible thing I've ever smelled, but gently, gently. Okay. Tiny little carburetors got tiny little holes and stuff in there. Well, the diaphragm's not bad. Not the best, but it's not bad. If I have another one, I'll put it in. Let's pop the other side off. We'll see what the, the uh, fuel pump the diaphragm looks like. It's a little screen there. Sometimes it gets plugged. Not always with debris. Sometimes it's just uh, varnish. It's a fine, fine mesh. Looks okay. This diaphragm set taken apart here. Hmm. 
It's not terrible. Not terrible. All right, let me go to my uh, inventory and see if I have a kit for this. You know, sometimes you'll see that these little check flaps are not working right. So, all right, let me sort through my stuff and see what I got. All right, so I didn't really see anything wrong in there. Not that I could see, anyways. But, uh, and I don't have a kit for it in stock. So, I threw it in the ultrasonic cleaner and I give it a bath. Sat in there for about uh, 10 minutes or so. And then I, when I blew it out with the compressed air, you know, I could actually smell old gas. So there was something in there. Anyway, so I blew all the little microscopic places out. Do not have a kit, so... What are you going to do? What are you going to do? Alright, so that's our... Throttle on this side. That's our idle screw there. It's gonna hook into the under the throttle linkage. Right there. Just like Zo. Make sure everything fits nice. Good good. Get that on there. I am undecided at this point if I'm going to knock out the limiters on that mixture screws. Sometimes you can get out, get away with removing the plastic limiter. I'll check the needle height. Something I want to show you, this, uh, this little kit here is for servicing these tiny little carburetors. There's seat installers, there's a Welsh plug remover, Welsh plug installer. This is actually a little tiny, little tiny slide hammer. Okay, but this is handy. It's for Walbro carburetors. And this gauge, it's stamped in here. Let's see if you can see it. Stamped in here, the what? models it fits but anyways what you do is you set these two legs on the top of the body and this little the center leg here should be at the height of your this here the lever that actuates the needle look at that we are right on the money actually a little high let's drop that down just a hair and you just bend it. So all you gotta do is just bend that lever a little. So you gotta push the hold the needle down. You need 17 hands again. Hold the needle down. And then just bend this tab to adjust the height. Perfect. Thanks. That'll work. All right. You guys remember which way this goes? I do. Besides, I can cheat. All I have to do is roll back the video. <laughs> so this diaphragm is horrible, horrible. Sometimes they get so bad they're like crackly and crunchy when you move them. It's not terrible, terrible. So it's going back in. I don't have a kit and I'm not waiting for it. If I put this back together and it doesn't run right, then I'll get a kit for it. Start all these tiny screws.
just going to pull them down evenly. Just run them down a little bit first, just so they touch. I'll get all four of those down. And now I can snug them up. It's going to go to opposite corners. Just snug. They're tiny screws in aluminum, so. All right. That's that. Just swung back around here. Oh, watch out for the vertigo. Don't get dizzy. It's a funky choke on this. Let's get you. All right, where? where here you go. Well, this is the choke. When you push the choke lever on, it holds the throttle open, just a hair, and then when you hit the trigger, open the throttle, choke flies off. Okay, that's that. Let's see if we can get this wrangled back in there. It's not a very easy position. That's in. That's in. Gotta get our fuel line attached. That's in. Get out of there, little who's. Get our idle screw pushed back through the cover. That's in. Little air horn here. Let's get the screw started. Diesel one started. And it seems to be there. Throttle works. Choke works. Back and forth. Get it torqued down even. Pulse hose on there. Nothing's kinked. All right. Air filter. Air filter cover. Just for fun, and pop that plug out of there. Let's have a look see. It's right there. Might as well look at it. We got five eighths. <clears throat> no. Three quarter. Three quarter for my American viewers. Nineteen millimeter for my Canadian viewers. Not horrible. Let's check the gap on it. You didn't see any of that. Any of it. Not terrible. Let's gap it. Twenty-five. Meh. What was that? Twenty-five. Oh, that's that. That's too much. Yeah, twenty-seven. Twenty-seven will do. NGK. I know I don't have one of those in stock, so.
I stock some things. I don't stock everything. It's not a full-time business. I do this at home. This is my in-the-garage playtime. Okay, let's see if it's magic. Get you fired back over here, flip the monitor over so I can see what you're looking at. The garage door open so we don't asphyxiate ourselves. change the gas. I'll change the gas out of it and see if some fresh gas runs any better. As far as the bar oil leaking out of it, there's nothing in it so there's nothing coming out now but it's not good to run these things dry. <laughs> they get hot. I believe the, well the fuel pump on, the uh, oil pump on these, I believe, I don't know every machine off the top of my head but I believe this one here, as long as the engine is running, the pump the oil pump is running, so even if it's sitting there idling, it'll pump oil. So, I'm going to change that gas out of there and hope for the best. Texas Chainsaw Massacre? No. I prefer Friday the 13th. That's it. Fresh gas. Runs pretty good. We'll let it clear its throat later. And I ain't sharpening in this chain. You can buy a new one. I'm going to say this one's pretty well done. You can buy a new one. They're cheap enough. Let me show you what I got out of the fuel tank, though. Hopefully you can get a shot of that. That's dark. There's actually, the camera's not picking it up. There's some water in there. Some floaties. Anyway, fresh gas. Run pretty good. Let's see if you can see that. I'm trying to get it so you can see that puddle in there. See that little orange dot? That's actually water. See it rolling around in there? Anyways, there was more of it. I dumped most of the tank out, and then I did just the last little bit I put in the cup here. So, anyways. That mess is out of there. Any small amount of reusable gas. Well, it's not reusable in an engine, but 
I reuse it for cleaning. I put it in a uh, in a container, and I use it in a, a an old, well, a new, but a cat litter box with a stiff bristle brush, and I just I clean motorcycle chains and stuff with that keeps the grease and gets the dirt out and junk. But it works okay. So yeah, that uh, little echo it runs pretty good now. All right, guys. Well, thanks for joining me on this one. Another video. Please don't forget to click the like button, comment, subscribe. Little echo. Little parts washer. <laughs> Little tiny three-gallon parts washer. I'm not gonna put gasoline in that. Thanks for joining me on this video. Like, comment, subscribe. There's a little button there, a little red square. It says subscribe. Go ahead, click it. Doesn't cost you nothing. Till the next video, guys. Take care. See you later.